Stephen Dodd, stand-up comedian and down-to-earth guy. And today, he's our guest. This is Alex and The Message. Hello everyone, welcome today to Alex and the Message with me. I have another interesting guest. I have Stephen Dodd, comedian. I've seen him for myself at Cradley Heath Hollybush. Absolutely hilarious. If you get the chance, come and see him. Stephen, how are you doing today? Great, great, thank you. Doing great, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's when I first met you. Uh, At the same time, I was doing stand-up as well. What were your sort of first impressions of me, if you can remember? (laughs) Well, it was one of them nights where... um... Dinsey, Dave Dinsdale, who, who's been helping out down at the bush oh, yeah, for years, yeah. he, he put one of his nights on, um, asked me to do it, and I thought you had great stage presence, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that, yeah. yeah. And I was just shitting lawyer. myself, man, for I mean, the first how old time. are you? 22 now. Yeah, yeah. so the, the thing is, though, was that your first ever gig? Was it? First proper gig, yeah. First yeah. proper gig, yeah, I mean... Yeah. I admire anyone who just gets up there and does it, do, do you know what I mean? It takes and balls, like, it, man? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It but, does. Yeah. But then, what what impressed me, what wanted to make you, you know, a guest on uh, this podcast, was how like calm you were on stage. And you, I know for a large portion, for maybe like 10, 20 minutes, didn't you? Like uh, as a headliner, yeah. something like that. And for the first five minutes, you were literally just like reeling off whatever you were thinking of, and it was killing. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what you know, something special here. But how did you sort of first get into comedy? Like. Was there a certain moment where you thought, you know, I can do this, I'm a pretty funny guy? Like, where did that come in? I think growing up, you sort of, you're around, I grew up in the house, I had two brothers, my dad and my mum, so there was like four blokes yeah. living in a house, do you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm the yeah. youngest. Um, and my dad, my dad used to laugh at stuff and I used to think, oh my God, what's he laughing at? Do you know what I mean? And I used to mm. think, oh, Jesus, that's like, Someone's made him laugh like, oh, I wish I could do something like that. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, sort yeah. of like, and then I think as you grow older and sort of like living on like the Woodgate Valley Council estate and in Quinton, you sort of you, you get to hang around with people and it, it's just it's like so, banter, really. It's like just, characters and that, yeah. yeah. You meet so many characters and you sort of, I, I think as you sort of go on, and I think watching a lot of comedy as well, I used to. Yeah, I used to watch it all the time. Like, um, I think it was Steve Coogan. He'd done an interview. Steve um, Coogan, my brother introduced me to him. Yeah, oh, I laugh my bollocks off. He's, man. he's brilliant. But what what he said was, he, he was being interviewed by um, John Bishop, and he said, when Forty Towers was on back in the seventies, yeah, yeah, it was an event because he didn't have a video recorder, mm. he didn't have Sky Plus, you couldn't get it on catch up, so. It was either then or never to watch it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Completely so, different to now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So like, it, like now you can go to someone, or if you watched, have you watched like Still Game, and they go, "Oh no, I get that and catch up." Yeah, yeah. But everyone's like watching it stutteringly. They're watching it like, like everyone's watching things at different times. Just but, little bits. Yeah. yeah. When we was growing up, some funny was on the TV. We all watched it at the same time. Had to watch it. Yeah, you had to watch yeah. it. Yeah. So I think just sort of. I think if you watch something long enough and you study something long enough, you start to pick up you start to pick up things and yeah. and, and then you realise um I think I was about twelve, thirteen and like um I was, like a first ever girlfriend and I phoned her out. Yeah. It was yeah. like half six and her mum said, uh, it's a bit late to be phoning and I put the phone down and I says to me, mate, where does she live? Never, never land. And like, <laughs> his food come out of his nose, do you know what I mean? And I Fuck thought, oh, I've just done that. Do you know what I mean? Like, he was yeah. laughing that much. I thought, I've just done that. And then <laughs> you sort of realise it. Oh, I've got something here. Do, yeah, do yeah. you know what I mean? And as as time went on and sort of starting work and and I worked in a butcher's and I worked in an office and then I, I think you sort of, you get your timing um, mm. with, with comedy as well. I always like, I always see like good comedy as, as as like a roundabout in a park when you know the roundabout's going round and yeah, you have yeah. to jump on at the same time. Oh, okay. If you jump on at the wrong time, that, that bar will hit you in the nuts and it'll hurt, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. It'll hurt yeah, do, do you know what I mean? And that, that's the, the way nuts. I see it, yeah. 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 And if if you jump in at the wrong time, then then it all goes wrong. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? So yeah. And it was about eight years ago, 
I've done my first ever, well, it was seven years, January just gone, I've done my first ever gig, yeah. See, that, so. that's hard for me to imagine because obviously I've only seen you when you're like sort of recently. Yeah. And it's a good standard, do you know what I mean? Like you're semi professional, you go up and down the country, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Doing little bits. So I guess for me, it was more like, okay, I practiced to death, I just want to make sure I say it right. Was that the same thing for you, or a bit different? Yeah, I, I, f- I think that um, when I first started, um, my, my dad comes to a lot of my gigs with me. Yeah. He's my biggest critic, and he's the one who gives me the. He'll give me praise as well. He's oh, not right. just. And, and the thing with my dad is, he's never lied to me go all throughout my life. I said to him when I was a kid, "I'm going to be a footballer." He's like, "No, you ain't." Do you know what I mean? Or I'll be a boxer. He's like, "No, you ain't." And then, and then. When just before I'd done the comedy, I said, I'm going to be a comedian. And he says, oh, you'd be good at that. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah. wow. And I thought, oh, my God. Do you know what I mean? But when I first started, my dad, um, Ryan Goff, who I do a lot of work with, and Nipper Thomas said, slow down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Slow down. Because I was like going, blue, 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 going really fast. Mm. I was like, just slow down. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. then, and then I was watching other comedians then I was watching comedians on stage I was watching them on DVD on YouTube yeah. and it, it is sort of like you have to sort of you, you want to get your material out there but you, you've got to so it is all about timing the pace all, of it and the everything. pace of it yeah yeah, yeah. And, and when I first started off I was I used to have my set written on the back of a bottle a bottle of water yeah um, and I was doing that for about six months and my dad says, you know, you've got to take this seriously. Yeah. You've got to learn. You, you said, it's got to be in your head, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I used to have a hanky in my pocket with written on, but I never referenced it. Do you know what I mean? I oh, never so. went to it. It was always there in my pocket and I was just, and it's sort of like a safety net really. Sort just of, just uh, in case it'll be the shit yeah, like you still yeah, got a backup. Yeah, yeah, just in yeah. case, yeah. Because there has been times on stage when I forgot what's coming next and there's nothing worse than that because the panic that comes over you and it's like oh my god where was I do you know what I mean yeah, and, then, yeah. and another comedian then says if that ever happens just say to someone well have you seen me before and if they go yeah go do you know what comes next then you'll get a laugh out of them then <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you pick up a lot of tips from like old, old pros and, and stuff like that definitely I mean I've been watching obviously like you said like lots of comedy and that online yeah. especially uh, you know I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm only 22 so a little bit lo- younger and one big guy I like is uh, sort of like, you know, he's like there, but Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And one yeah. thing that he said is that a comedian is someone who isn't quite a human anymore because they've been on yeah. stage and like they've said their stuff and some of it doesn't work, some of it does. But it's like, you're no longer a human, you're like a humanoid. You're kind of like a human, but you look at the world differently. Yeah. Is that something that you think once you start comedy, it is a bit different? It is. You, you sort of, you have to look for the funny in everything yeah. um, you do. And sometimes I think it can annoy people as well because sometimes I'll be with the family or, or I'll be at work or something and something will happen and I'll just try and make a joke of it and they'll be like, oh my God, does he ever stop? Do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? But yeah. what you said there about Jamie Seinfeld, it's true. You, you have to look for the funny in everything because sometimes you think you get a joke and... A lot of them, where I can, I'll throw them out on Facebook, and if it goes well, I think yes, I've got, I've got a winner here. It's, it's easy. You've got how many likes you got? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You think I've got, I've got a winner here? Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? But he's spot on there, Jerry Seinfeld. He's saying you, you do, you don't become human. Um, you sort of like, um, and you become a, a lot more self-critical of yourself. I've noticed where, that as well. Yeah. Whereas before, before I was a comedian, I could sit in a pub and say something. And nobody laughed, and they'd be like, oh, wow. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't even bother me, but now yeah. I think, oh, why aren't they laughing? Why aren't they laughing? Do you know what because I mean? Because you used to be on stage, yeah, and yeah. having the audience and, there. Yeah. yeah, and something you might really brilliant in your head. People think, that ain't me really funny. Do, do you know what I mean? That's It's a big difference, though, isn't it? Because some people are only funny around their mates, like, do you know what I mean? But it's yeah. making that transition of being, you know, the funny one to being an actual comedian on stage who's making a little bit of money from it. Like... How did obviously you say you're a funny guy, yeah, and it's it's clearly on stage. How did you make that transition? Were you like the funny guy in the group, or did you like just have a different view on what everyone else was doing? They always said I was like the funny guy in the group, yeah, like, yeah. sort of like oh, everyone go, oh, yeah, Daddy's a right laugh, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I'm a right laugh with Daddy, or we're going on a day and they go, yeah, yeah, Daddy was brilliant and stuff like that. And you sort of like think, well, I just want to laugh, do, do you know what I mean? You mm. sort of like. Um, I think a lot of it as well, like I'd, I've, I've had like depression and OCD since I was very young and that, and sort of, you, 
you can hit rock bottom and you just then just got to look for the humor and stuff it's sort of that can drag you that can drag you out of it do, mm. do you know what i mean it's yeah. sort of like it, it, some days you can just sit in the i can sit in the flat and feel oh god I feel terrible today but then i'll probably watch an episode of friends for like the nine thousand time and mm. i just think that oh, love ain't too bad after all do you know what i mean or, i think if you can laugh about stuff it just takes yeah, you to another level do yeah, you know what i mean yeah but with with that transition um it was 2010 and I had two friends die in the same year. Uh, one died of cancer. I knew he was dying, um, Darren. But all throughout the time he was dying, he was like, oh, wow, do you know what I mean? He was so brave. It was unbelievable. And then I had another friend who, who was he, he was a right character. Right? He was mad. He mm. was mad. And he, he died uh, through through drinking. And, and then I thought, if I don't do this comedy now, it's now or never. Do, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, I booked on a course, a one-day comedy course in town, at a place called the Victoria. Right. I don't even know the bloke who's who's running it now. I can't even remember his name. I don't think he's around anymore. But I went there and I learned more. Off, there was um. There was a trans comic, um, and they taught me more about sort of stage presence than anything that we'd learned that day. We learned. We done some good exercises. Like, right, yeah, um, yeah. We 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 done an exercise where you had to go on stage and pretend that the headliner hadn't turned up, and you had to try and keep the the crowd pleased for like oh, five so minutes. Oh, so it's like mental. F- yeah, 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 yeah. That was good, but it was we had really bad snow. I remember it took me about four hours to get home from town. Fucking hell! Man. And then the next day, he rang me because what it was, he paid fifty pounds to do the one night course. Yeah. And then the next day, he does a showcase back at the same pub. But you charge people a fiver to get in. Mm. So he phoned me the next day and he says, Well, how many are you bring in tonight? And I said, Are you having a laugh? I said, Have you not seen outside? I said, There's no buses running by me. <laughs> All right, then, don't worry about it. I'll try and get you on another showcase uh, somewhere in the future. And I just thought, I'm never going to hear off him again. So. Yeah, it doesn't sound the best. But then it sort of like kicks that sort of kick started me to sort of start performing. And yeah. then I found the Hollybush. Um, where we are now, found the Holly Bush, messaged Dave, and he said, "Yeah, I can fit you in." So me and my mate come down the week before and had a look, see what was going on, mm. and and then I come the week after. But like an idiot, I invited every single person that I know, basically. Which, no, that's the one I, thing I didn't want to do. I wish I hadn't have done that now because it was just so much pressure yeah. for me. And and to be fair, it, it went all right. I've still got a recording of it somewhere, but. Again, I learned a valuable lesson that night because I went on there. I didn't have a drink or anything. And by the time I left, we, we licked her up all there somewhere. I looked like one of the BJs by the time I got off stage. You know what I mean? My <laughs> yeah. mouth was completely dry. But right. it, it was nice. I had an email off Dave Francis the next day and he said, you know, that was really good. Uh, message me. Let me know when you're on another spot. And, <laughs> well, there you go. And, and things just snowballed from there then. And it was like, it, it, it sort of gave me that confidence to, to do it you get the do, bug do you know down I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it is a bug as well and, and the thing is as well like, people say oh you're funny in a group and that you're funny in a group or you're funny with your mates but then it's a big gamble if you go on stage and you're not funny or if you go on stage and you fail you'll think oh god I was going to say um, what's that one got uh, the Reginald D Hunter you know, yeah and, yeah uh, he was on um, the breakfast show doing it for BBC it's a very mainstream but he was saying like in a film, like if something don't go right, it might not be you. It might be the director, yeah, the yeah. lights. But if it's stand up, it's probably you. Do yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you again. It's not against. I shouldn't really say that. It's which you. I shouldn't say against because from what from what I learn and the books that I read, comedy audiences go to laugh. They go yeah. there to laugh. So it, it's not you against the crowd. Perhaps at Christmas time, it's you against the crowd. You know what I mean? Because, Trust me. Yeah. yeah, it is you against the crowd. But, I can imagine that. Yeah. But it, it it's you and the crowd. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're you're sort of um, almost like a conductor. That's how yeah, someone yeah. told it to me. You're, okay, yeah. but here's when you laugh. Here's when yeah. not, you laugh again. Yeah. Yeah. And it, everybody dies on stage. Everybody dies on stage, and it is um, it's good grinding as well when you do. I think really it humbles is. you straight away. Yeah, it is because sometimes you can get carried away. Because when I first started off, I thought, yeah, here we go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'll be on the Apollo by the end of the year and that. And then you sort of, you, you sort of think, no, you have a reality check then when you die. Um, yeah. I think the first time it hit me when I'd done um, hilarious comedy, run um, 
they run a, a gong show once a year. Right. Big thing at a rugby club. Okay. I think it was in Kenilworth. And, um, Kenilworth. I went along. Um, I'd actually won a competition at a pub in Sally Oak and one of the promoters from Fordham says, come along to the gong show. Oh, fucking hell. And I got gonged off with like 10 seconds left and I was absolutely gutted. Oh. I, I was nearly crying. I really was. I was absolutely devastated. <laughs> but it was the grounding that I needed. And then... Yeah. The promoters that were there um, said, you know, we've seen enough. We, we can use you in the future. Do you know what I mean? So I thought that that was great. But I've done a few gong shows when I first started off and they're, they're, they're horrible. They really are horrible. Yeah. I don't agree with them. I really don't. It's like survival of the fittest, isn't it? And it's an embarrassing way of doing it. I just think in today's society, we've got pro- programmes like X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, which I'm not knocking because Britain's Got Talent could be like, the, the key to success for some it, people it could, do you know yeah, know? but more so the X Factor where people are rude to acts on stage yeah and it's seen as the norm now I think do you know X Factor though I must admit the people that go on there they're not always the brightest and it's like no. if you're going to sign up to that it's almost like well you're putting yourself liable for this do you know what I mean well, well years ago about nine, ten years ago, I did go to the X Factor auditions at Villa Park. Flipping out. Because I thought I could, I can sing a bit, but I'm not a good singer. I'm all right, oh, I'm all right. right karaoke singer, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, but I yeah. thought, I'd go along, me and my nephew went along, he was about 15 at the time, so we'll go along just for a laugh, and what it is basically, there was like 10,000 people in a football stadium, and you, you go around the side of the pitch, and every sort of 20 yards, there's somebody you have to sing to, like oh, in front right. of a black screen and uh, the people that were going through were all the brilliant singers all the nutters that you see on yeah, the show yeah. do you know That's what I mean you there's the sort of no in between but I'm glad I went because it was such a funny day it was such a funny day it was like uh, it was just an experience mm. so like uh, it, it was it was really good but but look but getting back to like gong shows and that I think yeah. because people see Simon Cowell shout somebody down on stage that they think it's acceptable for them to do that in a pub. It's two different worlds. Show. It? Yeah. Yes. It's the audience, and then he's he's like, you know, the uh, what's it called? The official title is like the executive producer. Yeah, it? yeah. It's a big yeah. difference from audience member and executive yeah. producer. Yeah, but I think that's that's what it is now. Like the thing, because that's the norm on the TV that they can do it. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. think I just think gong shows are cool. I ran one in my local pub once, which was probably the worst thing, uh, worst mistake I ever made. I love my friends to bits, but. There was like 20 acts on and only one got through. Only one never got gunged off and, and she won in the end, do you know yeah, what I mean? So, she would, yeah, only one yeah, standing it, it was a, It was a bit of a, a nightmare night, really. But it, in a way, it's 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 good. It's a good learning curve for you. But I just think that you sort of, there could be an easier way than... than it does seem like that's somebody. quite a harsh way to do it, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. there, there's a way to do it, like come to a... Yeah, I mean, the Holly Bush, like, it's a friendly place, do you know what I mean? You can come down, do sort of your five minutes and that, but that sounds flipping brutal compared to that, do you know what I mean? The Holly Bush is brilliant because you've got a crowd that are fair. I've yeah. never heard the crowd be rude to anybody. Yeah. Um, there's always people here, audience members, other acts that will give you advice. Mm. They'll, they'll tell you about other gigs and that as well. They'll always, they'll, everyone's always been... Genuine, and you see that at Bushfest. I don't know if you came to Bushfest at all. That was just uh, before I did my first yeah. thing. Yeah, Bushfest is brilliant because there's that many, there's that many comedians that come here um, of all levels, and it's just great to be around. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just great just to sort of. That's the energy you want in it as a comedian. You want to be yeah. around people who've got the yeah. same sort of mindset as you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does. It's it's it is, but. The, the Holly Bush, I would recommend to anybody who's getting into comedy to come here straight away. Um, because, and it, sometimes it, it, I worry about sort of a place like this because it doesn't get appreciated enough. This is stage time that people want. People are always moaning, I haven't got stage Agreed. time, I haven't got stage time. It's right on their doorstep to a lot of people. Come and use it, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, come yeah. and support it. It's as good as, you know, I mean, it's good, but you can make it better by joining. And it's the attitude, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, people man, oh, I can't get a gig, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can never get stage time. But it's here. This this is what annoys me. It's on your doorstep, do you know what I mean? Is that it's, what you've seen, like, over the years? Like, sort of, people who might have had potential, but they're just sort of, like, they're lacking the willingness. I, I don't know about that. I just think that sometimes you'll get acts that have been here, that progressed. But they've never come back. Do, oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's acts, 
that do come back here all the time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That sort of. I just think you never forget your comedy roots where you first started and yeah. the, the people that supported you. Um, I'd do anything for Dave Orwell uh, because he is. I've been to other open mic nights and you can't even get a seat because they're just like, oh, don't sit down or they don't offer you a drink or anything. Do you know what I mean? It's just like you're doing them a favour. Or well, sorry, they're doing you a favour by giving you the room to do your comedy. In. It's a different atmosphere. Yeah, that, yeah. but here yeah, he's all about that Ali Bush is all about the acts, giving them the time of day and, and giving the punters the, the best the best night as well. Mm. I've seen that as well because like, it is just it's just good positive vibe. That's all, that's the only way you can really describe it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If someone ain't been here, it's just all positive and like you said, learning, get your minutes and if you're a startup comedian around yeah. Birmingham, come here because there'll be some comedians who might be on the verge of you know wanting to try it. Do you know what I mean? Just what, what would be your advice to them? Just say get out there and do it? Or? Do we, do we, I sometimes think the only way you can learn is, is by doing it. Every time I have material, new material, I'll bring it here to the Olive Bush mm. and I'll, I'll have a list of the new material and I'll put a cross or a tick next to it, whether it works or not. Yeah. Because this is the, the honest opinion of it. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sort with of you. like, this is, this is the honest opinion. And say to any, any like budding comedian, just do it. Because you don't want to get to the stage. You know, this is like a cliche where you're old and you think, well, oh, we should have tried that. Well, it's regretting it. Who wants regret, like? My biggest regret, I, don't, I started when I was 37. I wish I'd have started when I was younger. I really do. That's the one thing that I regret. I wish mm. I'd have done it years ago. Yeah. I, I really, really do. I think do if you ask anyone sort of like who's you know, maybe around that 30-odd age and they've found something they love to do, yeah, if they, yeah. it takes a bit of effort to start, they would yeah. be like, oh, yeah, start it earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think that's the only thing, that's the one regret I've got about comedy is not starting it earlier. Mm. Um I really do. I really do. We should start, but then there's nothing I can do about that now. Just sort of, sort can of. You in... joke about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've tried to make myself look young, Dad. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I have. I've tried to look a bit younger. So, like, um, yeah. Like, okay, so that's like at the Hollybush, but also you've been around the UK, haven't you? So yeah. Tell me about. Yeah. Tell me about the first time then you went away from Hollybush to wherever you went to. Can you remember that? I think the furthest one I've done away it was a, a social club in Wales um, yeah. and it was a brilliant night it really was I was looking around on Facebook and somebody said they needed acts for a charity night mm. and me and two of my pals went there and um, the bloke's name was Russ Evans I think he lives in London now and he, he's he's not I don't think he's a comedian anymore he's, he's more of an actor oh, but right. I'd done like another two gigs for him after that at the same venue mm. But it was a great night, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, I thought, wow, this is what comedy is all about, like a road trip with my two pals, and yeah. do, do you know what I mean? And like, um, it, it was great. And then I'd done um, Hot Water Comedy in Liverpool. Oh, yeah, I've seen them on Facebook. Yeah. Before it was the club, they used to they used to be in a nightclub, um, and I thought it was brilliant, um, because straight away when the comedy finished, it turned into a nightclub within seconds, it was like that film, Bugsy Malone. I don't know if you've ever seen that, where oh, yeah, when, when like... the police come in and the tables just turn over. It was just like that within seconds. No way. Um, wow. it, it just turned into that. And um, I've done the frog and bucket, but I waited, I think, until I'd been... It was only about two years ago I'd done that. All right. Because I think it would have like, crippled me for the gun there and got booted off mm. before the five minutes was up. Yeah, yeah. So I was more of an more established within myself before I went there yeah um, and that was an experience as well I just wanted to say that I've done it do you know what I mean and and to be fair it was nice to stand on the stage that sort of Peter K had started off on do, do you know when what you mean? think so about like that so many great comedians yeah in a sense yeah. going on stage you're doing roughly what they would do when yeah, they started yeah. out do you know what yeah, I mean yeah yeah it's good mad. So, who would you say has been the most influential comedian? I know it might be hard to do one, so maybe a couple like or don't know. I'm sort of I like the older school comedians like Les Dawson. Oh um, yeah, Les Dawson. My mum likes him. Yeah, yeah. I think Les Dawson to me was a comedy genius. Mm. Um, I've got his CDs in the car. I've I've read um, some of his books and that, and he's just he's he's a wordsmith, and he's really really brilliant and he was it was just him and the crowd it, it was like and Bob Monkhouse as well Bob mm. Monkhouse was so clever um, and he had that much respect in the comedy industry there was 
there's, there's quite a sad. Um, he does a show. He knows he's dying. He's got cancer. He does a show in London, and all of the the crowd there, a lot of them are the young comics um, of, of the time, right. up and coming, brilliant acts. And they was all mesmerised by him. Do you, do you know what I mean? And he had that much sort of power over yeah, the room. Yeah, yeah, he had that much, and he, because he used to, he used to develop with the times. Do, do you know what I mean? Like mm. he'd go to a town, he'd look at the local newspaper in that town, and he'd make jokes of what was going on. Um, I I done a gig in Bromsgrove um, about four years ago now, and I was MC for the night, mm. and I looked at their local paper, the Bromsgrove Advertiser. And the front story was uh, somebody had had the trainers robbed from the porch. Right. Right. And I just thought, oh my God, that makes the front of your local paper. And I said, <laughs> I said on stage, I said, in Birmingham, we've got knife crime, people trafficking, <laughs> gun crime, drugs. I says, but nothing compared to what goes on around here. I said, yeah. can you believe that someone had, had their trainers robbed out the porch? And there was all like, no way. And I said, honestly. And then I showed them the paper and there was like, oh my God. What? Couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking but hell. I just think that those sort of people that invest in their in their craft. It is a craft. Do, do you know what I mean? That yeah. they invest in their craft and um, sort of like I've been reading a book by Eddie Brayburn. He used to write for Morecambe and Wise. Right. Yeah. Um, again, it's just him investing in in his craft, and that's the one thing I need to do more of because I'm quite a lazy writer. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. sort of like with me, things come to me sporadically. Really, what I should be doing is sitting down at least two or three hours a week trying to generate jokes. That's some of the Seinfeld, another one, you had Hannibal Burgess, you heard of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They say, like, you, you sort of, if you're going to make it sort of that level, or even, you know, with any level, you need to be like a writer as well. Yeah, it's that yeah. sort of dedication you need to. Yeah, it. and I've just listened to Stephen King's book as well about writing because, and he said, you know, he's going on about people writing. If you're going to do it right, he said, don't just go around, skirt around the issue. If you're going to write, write, do you know what I mean? And that's one area that I do need to sort of... I'm, I'm hoping, I'm going to go to Edinburgh next year uh, yeah. for a week or two weeks. and okay. So I'm going to try and get a longer set. Mm. But this is that's what's going to spur me into action, is is, is more writing. Because that's because, like the productivity end, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's it sort of like, yeah. Because, and, that, and that's the only way, and that's something that I am sort of working on. I mean, the last sort of three years I've, I've managed to lose about five stone in weight managed to sort of get myself healthy and now you know, fair I'm, I'm getting more productive do, do you know what I mean so now I'm thinking about things more my mind starting to become sharper and 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 now I think I need to discipline myself um, to, to, to write every day do, mm. do you know what I mean or at write at least two or three times a week yeah uh, look I've changed it from every day to two or three times a week so I'm doing it already there I'm procrastinating <laughs> do you know what I mean there so, you go. and I think that those people like Les Dawson Bob Moncase um, they write like you say Seinfeld um, it's almost like they've got an addiction for writing it's yeah. that sort of uh, yeah. compulsive like yeah like Frank Skinner Frank Skinner you know used to go to the Bear in Bearwood in Birmingham with a new 15 minutes every week Every week. Yeah, every week. Now that's week. tough. If, if you think that's easy, 15 minutes, yeah. listeners, I encourage you to sit down here yeah, and think of something funny and then think of enough of those to build up 15 minutes. It's fucking hard, I'm telling you. 15 minutes every week, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think, oh my God, it's sort of like, that is amazing. In my eyes, that is. That is amazing. They're just, people like that, I've got a lot, a lot of admiration for. I was going to ask you, because uh, I don't know if you've seen the HBO show, Talking Funny. It's where you've got Chris yeah. Rock, Louis C.K., um, then uh, Seinfeld, Gervais. And now I have a bit of a, an argument about whether the audience are coming to see an act, so like a set, say, 30 minutes, or the new stuff, so something that somebody's written. What would you say to that? Is it more about the act or more about the writing? Sometimes I think that a young comedian or an up-and-coming comedian like myself has to have jokes. I have mm. to go in there with jokes, and they have to be funny. If not, I don't get the audience's attention. Yeah. But someone like John Bishop or could go on stage and just talk because he's John Bishop. Do, do you know what I mean? It's, nah. it's like, I don't know. My opinion of it is the voice as well. Yeah. It's very important. Because yeah. it conveys everything you want to know about the comedy character you're trying to put across. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And it, a lot of it, 
the material is the, the main thing, but a lot of people do go just to see, just to see the acts. Um, and what what does annoy me, and I've seen it a lot on Facebook just lately, it's one of the negative things of Facebook. A couple of young comedians have said, oh, I watched so-and-so last night and he weren't very good. And people have rounded on him and, and they're saying, look, oh, how many times have you filled out Wembley or how many Netflix specials you have you done? And I think, well, you're allowed an opinion. Even yeah. though you're a young comedian, an up-and-coming comedian, you're still allowed an opinion. Yeah. Um, one of them said something about Michael McIntyre. It was on BBC One. Now, I'm a big fan of Michael McIntyre. Uh, he's mainstream, but I think the character that he plays... Like, yeah. Yeah. He's like a bobblehead that just is funny, do you know what I mean? That's all but he's funny. worked damn hard to get where he is. Yeah. But I watched the same programme and I switched it off after 10 minutes because I thought, it's not funny. Normally, I think he's hilarious. Yeah. But that person said he wasn't funny. That was their opinion. They're a licensed payer. They've paid to the well, that's, BBC. That's what it's about because it's the yeah. audience that decides if it's funny or not, yeah. do you know and, what I mean? And then he got rounded on because there was like, oh, I bet you've not even done an hour on the stage in total. And I just thought... It's out of order, that is. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody said something about Kevin Hart yesterday and somebody said, you need to show a bit more respect. Well, for one, Kevin Hart isn't going to be reading the Comedy Collective on Facebook. He just ain't. And he's not going to phone you up and go, how dare you write that about me on Facebook. Yeah. But I just think they're entitled to their opinion. Do, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, sort of yeah. like, they are entitled to their opinion. If you ask any comedian, I swear they'd say, well, if it's not funny, I'd rather them yeah, not laugh. Because yeah. then it's, it's only going to improve them, do you know what I mean? Of course it is, yeah. Especially yeah. At, the lo- at the top level, they don't care, do you know what I mean? They've got their audience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've, to a degree, they've they've already made it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And sort of like, but the ones, the good comedians will then just keep wanting to stay at the top. They'll, they'll work and they'll work and they'll work. Like Ricky Gervais, not so much his stand-up, but he, the stuff, the other stuff that he does. Like he's a TV in there. Yeah. He's always evolving do, do you know what I mean and definitely he's always evolving and that's what's keeping him in front of everybody else what did you think of The Office when you first saw I it I loved it because there was nothing else like that I mean no. that he said that he went to the uh, producers and at a BBC and they were like well okay because we like you we'll give it a go do you know what I mean yeah. had Stephen Merchant with him but when you say to someone oh, you're going to have a comedy series about an office nothing, not too much happens then there's a boss you- see I, I worked in an office at the time yeah and we thought in, in the office that I worked in me and my good pal at the time in the office we just loved it we absolutely loved it, really? it took, yeah it took me back to when like when I was on about earlier when you was going about 40 towers and that every week that was an event watching the office was an event do you yeah. know what I mean it was like did you see it last night did you see it last night <laughs> do you know what I mean you'd be like only like him only like him do you know him that comes in and does the sandwiches yeah, and all? Yeah. do you know him that comes in and like the IT department do you know what I mean at the IT department hit the nail on the head I just thought it was brilliant and it yeah. was like we went to watch that David Brent on the road. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. About three years ago now, and we was in the old Quinton Cinema. Right. More, more local cinema. I love it to bits, so I do. But God bless, I don't think it's got long left now because very rarely anybody was in there. But oh. there was like four of us in there. Me and my pal was absolutely just couldn't stop laughing because he's so original. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, sometimes he's not afraid to go to places either. That's why I sort of like those sort of acts. Like, I love Frankie Boyle because Frankie Boyle is ruthless. He's a legend. He's a le- he's ruthless. Jim Jeffries is ruthless. They really do not care. No, they, they've got no. someone that thinks funny, and it just happens to be that it's brutal. Yeah, yeah. There's one Daniel Tosh. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. And I've heard of Daniel Tosh. No, is he listen on... to him. You, you get him on Spotify or yeah. get him on YouTube. He is is ruthless. He's absolutely ruthless. And it will go to places you think, oh my God, he didn't say that. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, but those are sort of like groundbreaking c- comedians. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? It's the, sort of, they're so definitely one bit of comedy. They yeah. just like take over. It's like comedy is almost like, I don't know, I, I imagine like an ocean, yeah. And they've dived so deep into one bit of it and they've got yeah. all the good stuff from there. Yeah. yeah. And, and like he, that Daniel Tosh says, you know, he says, he said, I'm charging $50 to get in here. He said, because I've got less chance of getting shot because if you're spending $50 on a ticket, you're less likely to be owning a gun and stuff like that because you're at the <laughs> higher end of society. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? And he knows that he's upsetting people and he knows that he's a target and yeah. he makes a joke of that. Do, do you know what I mean? It, it's almost diffuses any sort of like bits of... Like, for an icebreaker, could you imagine that? Like it's just, yeah. If you get it, you're going to laugh. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
But I couldn't, I couldn't be one of those shock comedians because they just look at me and think, "What a wanker!" Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I've like, it is the character in it. Yeah, but I admire them. I think that Jim Jeffries is. He's fantastic. Um, I remember, I don't know if I want to repeat it. I mean, it's been on YouTube for about 10 years. What would your judgment say? Should I, should I save a joke or should I not? No, you can, yeah, can, yeah. What, the, what the joke was, he was basically saying, um, so I was talking about having sex with women, yeah. Yeah. And he says he doesn't want to have uh, sex with women no more because he doesn't like women. Women don't like him. Yeah. They don't like each other. Yeah. Whereas he likes men. Men like him. They like each other. Yeah. But he couldn't fuck something that he respects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, I, like, that is to sort of, it's brutal, but it's genius. Do you it know really what I mean? Is, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that probably isn't his real thoughts. That is something, he might just be saying that. Just It's probably him turned up to 10. Yeah, of course you know it I mean? is. Of course it is. I mean, I was listening to Jimmy Carr yesterday. I was doing some painting in the flat. I was decorating. I was listening to Jimmy Carr. Right. And he was answering, um, he was answering letters, like Dear Deirdre letters. And like, he's, the one girl's phone in says, oh, I'm, I live with my stepbrother, he's a, he's a high team, I'm, really, I'm thinking of moving, I'm leaving home, I'm 17, I'm going to move out because of him. And he wrote back saying, uh, think, who's worse, your stepbrother or a Serbian pimp? Do you know what I mean? And I just thought, I just thought that was genius. Do, do you know what I mean? I just thought, it, it's brutal, it's to the point, but yeah. it, it, it's genius. Fucking hell. It, it's genius. <laughs> Jokes are like, do you want to hear a good joke yet? I always think about it for maybe a two weeks, like non-stop, and I always smile at it, do you know what yeah, I mean? I'm yeah, not going to yeah. burst that laughing, but if it's something that you just like, it just stays with you. Of course it does, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like, it's like, there's a, someone sent me a picture of, there's like a young girl with a with a bottle of booze and a fag in her mouth, and the caption saying, just fuck off, my one twelve now. Do you know what I mean? I just thought that was hilarious. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I shouldn't probably laugh at it, but I couldn't stop laughing. Well, it's just it's just like taking the piss out of the absolute extremes. Of society, you know I mean? it's just taking the Mickey out of society yeah. now. Do, do you know what I mean? Exactly. It's sort of. I just think sometimes if you can't laugh at society, then you've got a problem because you've got to laugh because things are getting that absurd just lately that. If you don't laugh, you, you'll go crazy. There's that many things. What would you say has been an absurd thing that you've heard about recently and you're like, Jesus? Anything in particular? I don't... I'm trying to think now, really. I mean, Donald uh, Trump's one that people go to quite a bit. I, I think, really, if he ever got impeached, half of these chat, half of these panel shows would shut down. Yeah. And it, I just think, really, that is... The joke's on them now because they're using it too much. That's Everything is Trump, 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 and I think really let it not let it go because you know there's you other know, things to joke. There's about. other things to joke about, but a lot of people look. I used to enjoy watching American chat shows. Yeah. I used to watch Late Night with Letterman when he was in charge. Letterman was brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I was watching one the other day, looking through the Sky channels, and for the first twenty minutes, it was just Trump bashing. I was thinking. When I watched you last week, it was just Trump bashing for the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay, we get it. He's an idiot. Do you know what I mean? You think he's an idiot. So just move on now to something else. It's sort of... I, I agree with you. Just spread devil's advocate. It's just mad that there's someone in office, yeah, the most powerful office. Yeah. And it's every week he does something. That if it was like a one-off, everyone would rip into it. But it doesn't so often. There's just yeah, too much Yeah, that's there. it now. People just think it's the norm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It, everyone just thinks so. Oh, that's well. ludicrous in itself. Yeah, and that, because people are on about it all the time, it, people just think it's the norm now. They're like, it's not shocking anymore. It's not shocking. You know, if he was to go out in the White House and take a dump on the front lawn, people just go, oh, well, that's Donald. Do you know what I mean? They just keep scrolling. Yeah, it, it's like in Family Go and they go, oh, that's Quagmire. That's what it's turned into mm. now. It, oh, that's Donald. Well, that, that's a joke in itself. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it's sort of like, the, the world is absurd. And what I don't like, and I try not to get involved in it, is there's too many comedians with political opinions. Do you, think, do you know yeah. what I mean? And they're at each other's throats on Facebook and that. And I think. I don't like it. I really don't like it. Do I, you know I, think, what I, mean? I think online stuff, yeah, it just, for things like that, when there's people who are going to use it in that way, I don't think it should be designed for political debates. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but a lot of people are just putting up clickbait, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. They, especially about like, Brexit and Remain and stuff like that. And then people are just, just at each other's throats. And I think, like, it's like a civil war in the country. Because, do you know, do you, sorry. Carry on. No, go on, yeah. It's civil war because. What are you going to say? Civil, civil war? war? That's what it is. It's created a civil war now. Somebody took a gamble and it, the gamble never paid off. So now, you know, 
it, now everybody's he's at each other's throats over it. Do you know what mm. I mean? Fifty-two and forty-eight percent, and it's just sort of like every day there's mudslinging being being thrown at each other. More so on Twitter than 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 Facebook. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I just think people in power aren't interested in us or our opinion. They don't. They just don't. They don't care they? about us. If they wanted to reverse Brexit, they'd do it like that, and then just let the rights happen. And then just go, well, they're all right, we all live in gated we all live in gated accommodation, we don't have to worry about that what goes on in normal life. So yeah. why we I just don't understand more about each other's folks all the time. I don't like it, do you know what I mean? Do you think people just like because life's that easy now, I mean go back to when we were all cavemen, yeah. We've gotta yeah, yeah. we gotta go we've got some we've gotta go kill a bear or something, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Whereas now it's like you've got a supermarket, you go to your job, you come back, life's sort of very calm, doesn't have to do something. When anything happens, it's almost like they've got the right to feel absolutely outraged. Do you know what? Some people are happy now because they've got Facebook and Twitter. They don't need. They don't need to leave the house to have a rave. Do you know what I mean? It's strange, isn't it? Yeah, you don't need to leave your house now to have an argument with somebody, and that's quite frightening. That is, that scares me. But you could sit in your house forever now and fall out with a different person every day if you wanted to. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's a frightening state of affairs now. That, it's, that a str- really... it's a strange way to use whatever medium it is as well to argue. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Better things yeah. to do with your time. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. I just think there's too many comedians got a political opinion, and I just think, well, set up a group, comedians for politics. Do you know what I mean? Talk just just leave there. it over there. Yeah, talk on there. Do, do you know what I mean? Sort of do that. Don't sort of and don't have a go at someone because they don't agree with your opinion. Do you know what mm. I mean? Or round on them or belittle them. I've noticed that also sometimes when I see an argument on Facebook or even in real life. It's almost echoing what they've heard on TV yeah, or something yeah. like that. It's, yeah. it's not really your opinion. You're no. like doing it for somebody else. It's like earlier when I said about people rounding on young comedians who had a go at famous comedians. <laughs> I wanted to get involved, but I thought, no, because I'll be here all day then. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I've got better things to do with my time than just sort of the backwards and forwards with, with arguments. You've definitely like, got uh, better things to do. Yeah, you know you definitely I mean? got better think, things think to everyone, do. I think the yeah, people yeah. who are doing that have got more. Yeah, yeah. Well, his podcast for the start has a better thing to do. do oh, you well, know there you go. Uh, um, keep subscribe, guys. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but I think sort of social media is it's good. Don't get me wrong, it's good. I've got in touch with people that I thought I'd never hear from again. Yeah, um, that's true. Do, do you know what I mean? And it's good for organising stuff. but And it's good for the comedy scene, but there's a lot of bad points with it as well. Do you think overall good or bad? I'd say bad at the moment. You say bad, bad, yeah. Yeah, and I just think it's going to get worse as well because people are just sort of... Some people are more famous on the comedy scene for what they've said on Facebook or the fact that they get involved in an argument on Facebook all the time. It's about views, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Some people's name are prominent in people's heads because of Facebook rants or the fact that when somebody posts something that's on Facebook, they're in there straight away. Yeah. And I think that's wrong because in this industry, you should be prominent for what you do on stage it's stand up not yeah. talk on the internet yeah. you know what I mean? I've always said that the relationship between you and the audience is the most important one not you and it's nice to get on with other comedians do you know what I mean it's nice to have a laugh mm. uh, we went to Leeds the other week three of us in a car and we had a brilliant time there and back Yeah, it was like the journey just flew by because we was having such a good time do you know what I mean Yeah. And then we met another comedian up there from Warrington and it was a really 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 good time but it's nice to get on with other comedians but the main relationship is you and the audience do you know that's what I mean that's why you're in the car to drive there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the main relationship in, in comedy is you and, and the audience and I think sometimes people are more famous for stirring the hornet's nest. Do you know what I mean? I don't like that. No, I don't, I don't like what that. Do you think of young people's social media? Because like, obviously, I'm, I'd say I'm someone who uses it, but very sparingly, and it's only for like contacting close friends. That I'm probably going to see yeah. anyway. Do you know what I mean? But then, what do you think generally about young people on social media? I think it's taken over the lives. Some of them. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, you can like sit head, in a pub. Head, yeah. You sit in a pub and it'd be like seven people together and every one of them's on the phone and you think, oh my God, do you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, I'm guilty of it myself. Sometimes I'll sit in a pub and I'm on the phone like that much. I just want to go put your phone away. Like my mum, if I go out for dinner, mum will go, put your phone away, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I have to, sometimes I'm in the flat now, I have to leave the phone in the other room, otherwise I'm checking it every five minutes. Yeah. And it's wrong. And it, it is an addiction. It is. It is an addiction. It's, it's, it's like a little game, yeah, and you're just giving your brand information. Because you yeah. can scroll so quick, like you can't do it with a newspaper, you've got to turn the page. Yeah. But when it's just there, you can sort of, okay, I'm bored of that, bored of that. And that, that does something to you. 
when when I used to get home from work about twenty years ago, I used to have me to read the newspaper at the table. Now I'm reading the phone. Do you know what I mean? So nothing's really changed in that instance. But now, instead of reading journalist opinion, which some of them are assholes anyhow, but now I'm reading everybody's opinion. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And sometimes you just think, oh my god, it's sort of like social media is a platform for everybody. Do you, do you know what I mean? I think that's the bad thing. Everyone's sort of like... Everybody's got a platform, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange times. Yeah. Very yeah, strange I mean, times. The other week in, in Manchester, there was a fight between two YouTubers that generated... KSI Logan Paul, yeah. yeah. That generated £40 million. And I'm thinking, there's boxers out there that have trained from the age of five upwards that are struggling to make ends meet. Yeah. And they're dedicated to their sports. And you get two YouTubers. Now, they probably are funny guys on YouTube, but they've made a fight in an arena, filled it, and made £20 million each. Off a sport that they haven't been dedicated their life yeah, to. Yeah, that, that, that they're using it to, to give them another platform, do you know what I mean? And I think that's wrong as well, because it's like you look at Celebrity Big Brother or Big Brother and that, and, and you look at all this other stuff, um, Love Island... People are becoming famous now without having a skill. Do, that, that's you know another I mean? thing. Ricky Gervais was like, he said, people do anything to be famous, whether it's yeah. like disgrace their family, just anything. So I can say, I'm on the TV. Yeah. 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 It, and that's it. That people are becoming famous now without an art form. And that's that's a frightening thing. I as think well. that's dangerous. My, my dad's got a good statement. Like you say, you're going to watch X Factor later. I go, so if you want reality TV, I'll just dip my head out the window. If I want reality, do you know what I mean? And that's what he'll say. If I want reality, I'll just dip my head out the window. That's the thing. It's reality TV. It's, yeah. it's, it's only reality when you're looking at it on the TV. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't real. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a Monday night. I don't mind watching old police interceptors or when <laughs> shoplifters get caught and stuff like that because yeah, yeah. it's exciting TV. Do you know what I mean? And they're not going on there to be famous. Yeah. But they're not being controversial on purpose. They're just being controversial because that's what they are. Do you know what I mean? So I feel young people, yeah. It's, like, yeah, yeah. it's, it's easier to just sort of do something and get so they're not bothered about sort of being successful as such it's about do people know me yeah when you're walking down the street they'll be looking left right and saying is anyone looking at me do you know what I mean like yeah, it's very yeah. strange behaviour that yeah, is very it is. strange it is and don't get me wrong when I go on stage it'll come off and people go oh that was great or someone will message me or or, or, or they'll go oh yeah I've seen you before you was really good and that there's no better feeling than that in the world when you've had a gig, you come off stage, you feel about 10 foot tall, do you know what I mean? The, the difference there, though, is that you're displaying a skill that not everyone can do, yeah. you know, at least at first, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but, and then, but when you look at that, compared to someone who might have said something controversial, or, you know, a young girl who's just had a, you know, um, done herself up for a picture, and it's like, mm, there's a difference there in art, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a bit strange. All right, um, well, what we'll do now, I like to always end the podcast with some uh, semi-philosophical questions, so I'll just yeah, go through yeah, these. Yeah. Um, so let's do it. Number one, you've already sort of mentioned it, but what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? Get out there, make people laugh, do it, do it. If you're going to do it, and look after yourself, look after your body, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I was drinking, 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 go out, binge drinking over weekend, weren't exercising, basically just just ruining myself yeah. look after yourself and enjoy your life but I wish I'd have said to myself do you know what start doing your comedy now do it mm. now get do, serious do you know with it yeah, yeah get serious at the age of 20 but more importantly look after myself because it's one thing they didn't do really mm. look after myself that's what I say I mean you've made it now do you know what I mean like yeah yeah five years you lost the weight do you know yeah. I mean? so that's still something yeah. yeah I mean it is I've done it I had type 2 diabetes and that's gone now do you know what I mean so but it, it, it's a struggle and it's only because I've got good friends and family to support me as well mm. that I've been able to do it because with regards to the mental health and that, the NHS just turning the back on you and it's not their fault, it's not the NHS's fault, it's austerity and that, but that's just another thing that, yeah. that's another show. Just, we'll leave uh, it over there. That, that'll the be road. number two when you come yeah, back yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, a nice one. Good answer. And then we've got number two, which is what brings you the most joy in life? I would have to say now, it's quite corny, it's making people laugh. Do you, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't say it's corny, it's genuine. Yeah, because it, even like, I'm in a WhatsApp group at work and I'll say something and I'll put smiley faces, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just think that 
I've done that, do you know what I mean? And sometimes when I'm nervous about going on stage and I'm thinking, well, I've done stand-up now for so many years, I can do it, and I've done it, and I just think, wow, this is great, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I say to people, whatever I've done in life now, I can always say I've got on stage and I've been paid for telling my own jokes, and that's for something I never dreamt of doing. It's do really you know unique I mean? because it's something that you've seen in your head You've managed to articulate it well to an audience, and then they've they they've jumped on your wave. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's unique feeling. There's just no better feeling than that. There really isn't. To sort of to do that, to be able to do that, there's no better feeling, and so I never ever take it for granted. Do, mm. you, do you know what I mean? Never. That's one thing because that's when you get your day in full. Then you take things for granted, and you're always learning. That's another thing I should have said to my twenty year old self. I'm listening to audio books. I'm listening to Billy Crystal today. Mm. Um, always learning, always listening, always listen to people that have been in the industry for a long time, mm. or people that are doing well in the industry. Yeah. Always listen to them. Listen to people because you can never ever stop learning. Yeah. Never stop learning. There's never going to be only every someone who knows everything. No, you know what I mean? no. But you never stop learning. Yeah. Um, never, and it's just to me, it's great because. I learn about comedy by listening to comedians yeah. and I laugh. So I'm laughing while I'm learning. Yeah. Whereas any other subject, I've done like, I've got like counselling qualifications and that. I have, I used to be a Samaritan and I've done counselling exams. I've got like a counselling certificate from Newman University and that. Oh, right. And all that learning was quite, yeah, do you know what I mean? It was quite intense. Yeah. But when you're learning about comedy, when you're listening to comedy, you're enjoying it. Do, it's do you know just what, what you're mean? interested in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a great, it's a two-edged sword. That's great. Do you know what I mean? You're listening, yeah. you're learning, and and you're learning after masters as well. It's it's brilliant. It really is. I've started to collect comedy vinyl now. I've been doing that for about eighteen months, and it's I've coming back in. Now, quite, quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a great shop on the Bristol Road, the Discovery, that sells quite a bit of it. Um, <laughs> I live literally, there's a block of flats just opposite. Yeah. yeah, I lived there for like two years at uni. You, you want to pop in there if you can. He's, yeah. he's, he's got such a collection of everything, but he's got like the spoken word, the comedy stuff. And and some of it I listen to, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, like old Bob Newhart, stuff like that, the American comedians. Mm. Um, they just, that's what I say. Learn, just learn, 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 learn. Never, Never stop, stop learning. learning. Yeah. 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 Whenever I ask people these, I'm always amazed at how good the answers are. You yeah, know what I mean? Always yeah. good answers. Um, and then the final one, then. Here we go. So we're doing about 50 minutes now. Final one. Yeah. Assuming we don't know who the listener is, what would be your final message to anyone listening? Um, well, I hope you've enjoyed the, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I just hope that you sort of... You sort of appreciate what goes on in comedy do, do you know what I mean that, and like I said about reality TV that you, you appreciate more the people that have to do an art form mm. that goes into being famous not fa- people that are famous for a reason Yeah. not because they're famous because they've ditched Wes on Los Island or, or you know a genuine reason yeah genuine genuinely famous people yeah. do, do you know what I mean what sort mean? of like in, 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 say famous like being famous I think yeah people are famous but they're still people do, do you know what I mean yeah yeah um, I'd, I'd done a thing I met Joe Calzaghe I'd done a set before he went on stage and I met him and I wanted a picture with him and my phone was playing up I was oh, I'm trying to get a picture of my phone's playing up and he was the nicest man in the world and I had a little bit of a chat with him about his film that he'd done yeah and I've must, I just thought what a top bloke do you know what I mean He's probably one of the most famous boxers that Britain's ever produced. Excellent fighter. Yeah. Excellent. But what a lovely man. Do you know what I mean? He said to me, calm yourself down, get your phone working, we'll get the picture. And then we had a chat, do you know what I mean? And I mm-hmm. thought, oh my God, how humble is he? Considering all that he's been through, and I just think that that is fantastic. But what I'd say to listeners is, you know, appreciate people for an art form, not because they're reality TV stars or they're slapping each other on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> There we go, guys. That's your final message. This has been Alex and the message. Steve, thanks for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. Thank really you. Has. I'm sure we're going to get a few comments saying, come back on again. Lovely. So uh, get in the comment section. But that was brilliant. You're welcome back at any time. Lovely. Thank you very much. Cheers, Alex. You have been listening to Alex and the message. If you stayed to the end, please drop a like. 
leave a comment and subscribe for weekly uploads. For regular updates you can also follow me on social media, firstly on Twitter as A and The Message and also on Instagram as Alex and The Message. Thanks for listening and have a great day.